Welcome to Norwood United Methodist Church and St. Mark's United Methodist Church Christmas Eve service. Originating from the sanctuary of St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Belpre, Ohio. This service is found on the Norwood and St. Mark's Facebook pages and can also be found on the St. Mark's YouTube channel. You are invited to share this service with your Facebook friends and please let us know you are there by clicking below the video and or sharing a comment. I would like to take a moment to thank those who are participating in this evening's service. I'd like to thank the Reverend Richard Thomas, who has arranged for some very special music for tonight's service, featuring soloist Judy Chevrant, Bonnie Thomas, and Connie Warfield. Mr. Michael Church is our videographer and editor and works the magic so that you can see this service on Facebook and on YouTube. My name is Dave Hubbard and I am the pastor of Norwood United Methodist Church in Marietta, Ohio and St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Belpre, Ohio. Welcome to this special Christmas Eve service on, in this most unusual year of 2020. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. 
Through Advent, we have been living with the devotional book, Advent, a calendar of devotions for 2020. And tonight we have reached the last devotion, the devotion for Christmas Eve. A few years back, my husband and my dad knocked down part of our dining room wall so the space would feel more open. I knew it was going to happen. He had it taped out on the wall and everything. I, I tried to imagine how the space might feel, but I couldn't picture it. I spent the last 18 months in this home, unable to figure out how to decorate or lay out this room. I could not get a mental picture or vision of what it could be. But the second the wall came down, lots of ideas started running through my brain. Oh, I could put that over there and this over here and take that down and put the table here. It took literally removing the wall for me to start imagining the possibilities. It's the same with us as Christians. Is that it? It's as if something must break down within us before we can see what God might want to do in and through us. If you want part of your life to be renewed this Christmas, you must name and own the truth. That's, it is hard to envision what you can't yet see. It may just be a wall inside of us that must come down so that the light can get through. This is what happens at Christmas. Jesus comes with love that gives us possibilities we didn't know existed. Like a wall torn down, the light now has a way to get through, to reach you, to shine on your neighbors, to light up a pathway of hope for our hurting world. We're almost there, dear ones. Light a candle this night. Love is on the way. Raise the candle up high for the world to see. It's becoming one of us. Are we ready to receive this love? May the steps we've taken together this Advent season prepare us to welcome God's love into our lives and world this year. We are in this together and our world needs all the light it can get. God, you're so close, and we can feel it. As we ease into the holiness of Christmas Eve, sustain, strengthen, and grant us joy at the arrival of your Son, Jesus. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, 
This Christmas Eve, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which is coming to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by his holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our scriptures and our songs this evening. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save. For love and unity within the one church he did build. For goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely, and the unloved, the aged, and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was made in the Word made flesh, and with whom, in the Lord Jesus, we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself has taught us. And I invite you to join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first lesson this evening comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Some 
Our gospel lesson this evening comes from Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. Hear the word of God. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to the Lord, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God 
for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of God for this Christmas Eve. Thanks be to God.
As I think about Jenny Smith's words in our Advent devotion for Christmas Eve shared a few minutes ago about how there was, was a wall in her home that she could not imagine how to decorate or to arrange the furniture with that wall there. But once the wall was removed, her imagination was open to all kinds of possibilities. I'll be honest with you. I was kind of hoping that by the time we got to Christmas Eve, the wall that is this global pandemic would have been destroyed and we would be back to normal. But as you know, that has not happened yet. The good news is that God has enabled communities of faith throughout the world to learn how to remove barriers, to take down walls, and to proclaim the good news of Christ in different ways, like on Facebook and YouTube, like we are doing this evening. Whatever is walling us in at this time, whatever is keeping us from being the people that God wants us to be, allow God's Holy Spirit to deconstruct those barriers, to take down those walls, and be open to the guiding of God's Spirit in your life. Can you imagine that God sent His Son so many years ago that the barrier that kept humankind away from God's love would always be torn down. And we celebrate the birth of that Son this evening as we break the bread and share the cup. And if you, for whatever reason, do not have bread and cup with you right now, just pause the video. Go to your kitchen. Find something that you can use for communion bread. Find some kind of drink if you don't have grape juice that you can use for the cup, for the wine this evening. And then when you return to the video, start it again and join with me in the great thanksgiving of Holy Communion for this Christmas Eve. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem 
and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all those gathered everywhere who celebrate the birth of Christ this day. And on these gifts of bread and cup, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen.
the Christ who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodness and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace and joy. Thanks be to God this Christmas Eve. Alleluia. <laughs>